Tall Tale TV. Of Monsters and Mushrooms by Leslie Heron. Chapter 1 Parasola. Ow, my head. Attila groaned as he pried open his one good eye. Pain flooded his senses in response, and he flung an arm over his head, shielding his face from the blinding light. His ears buzzed, like the sound of someone shouting at him in an ear splitting whisper. Even with his eye clenched shut, he could tell he was lying on a cold, hard surface. There was also something painful stabbing him in the back. He reached behind him as he sat up and pulled out an old porcelain bedpan. He gave it a dirty look as he set it off to the side. With his vision finally adjusting for the light, he looked around. He was in a small concrete room with a high ceiling. Several windows sat high up on the walls and the ones that had not been plastered in newsprint allowed little light through their yellowed panes. Farther up, many small glowing eyes stared down at him from the rafters. Attila frowned at them and moved his attention elsewhere. The walls were hidden behind tall, teetering stacks of bookcases, filled not with books, but containers. Countless jars in different sizes and shapes held an even greater variety of specimens, Animals, plants, and even mushrooms filled each container. Attila squinted at them, unsure of who would have this many jars, or why. A blob of inky goo sloshed around in its jar like a jellyfish, turning to present a giant eye to him. Attila shook his head vigorously, muttering nope under his breath. The rest of the room was lackluster compared to the impressive collection of specimens. There were unsteady piles of textbooks, ranging in subject from string theory to mycology. A desk bowed under the weight of stacks of papers, more books, and a couple of precariously placed jars. And a small basin, set deep into a stone outcropping, dripped slowly from its rusted faucet. Attila tried to recall this place, trying to pull it from a memory. But he just sat there his bare feet dangling over his resting place, drawing up a blank. In fact, he was struggling to remember anything. He looked down at the table he was on and felt another shudder of nope run up his spine. It was an old, cracked and chipped porcelain operating slab, complete with yellowed hoses and a sinister groove in the edging. He pulled a face at the sight of a massive spider spinning a web between two faucets near the end of the table. He reached for the small, portable welding torch he always carried in his tack vest, but found the entire garment missing, along with his flashbangs, his box of matches, and his homemade napalm. He was at a loss, unsure of how he was going to light the little hell spawn on fire. He shrugged and decided to use the bedpan, smacking it over and over as the chihuahua-sized arachnid squealed, writhed, and eventually stopped moving, save for the occasional twitch. This place was in desperate need of an exterminator. Unable to shake the feeling he was forgetting something, or someone, Attila slid off the table. His bare feet hit cold concrete, and he began to scan the room for the remainder of his clothes. He had to get out of here. He couldn't shake the feeling. But why? What was so important? Attila tugged one boot on, and then reached for the second. He was halfway through pulling on his other shoe, when his toes met with something large, damp, and sticky. He pulled his foot from the boot faster than Brig could snatch a meal out of his hand a speed that would make most gunslingers jealous. Brig! A memory snapped back into place, and Attila recalled images of something dragging off his friend into a forest. It was black and inky, with too many eyes and too many teeth. Brig's face was written with fear as he was pulled backwards into the dark. Attila snapped back to reality, just in time to see something with tentacles climb its way out of his shoe, and slide down a drain pipe. Okay, this place is just too weird. I gotta get out of here, Attila said aloud, to no one. 
he decided to forgo his once-occupied boot and grabbed his poncho from the other corner of the table. He slung it over his head, scanning the room for a door. The light from the rafters glinted off a doorknob, as if to highlight his escape. His hand was outstretched, ready to pull open the door before he stopped. He still felt like he was missing something. He turned on his heel once more. There, sitting on the slab near the twitching remains of the spider, was his hat. Attila smacked his forehead. Duh, no real Merc would ever be caught without his hat. He retrieved the gambler-style cowboy hat and gave it a quick once-over before shoving it to top his head. Much better. He turned and wrenched open the door, unsure of what to expect. Perhaps there was a hallway that led deeper into this hospital of horrors, or perhaps just a storage closet full of more specimen jars. But, as luck would have it, neither of those things greeted him. Instead, a wave of sheer panic ripped through him. Two large, white eyes peered back at him from within the veil of blackness. And then the owner of those giant eyes began to move. Slowly, it stepped out from the shadows and into the light. Attila took a lengthy step back, and then another, and then one more, trying desperately to put some distance between himself and the thing struggling to pry itself from the doorway. A large, red point began to emerge, unmistakably that of a beak. It was long, sharp, and covered in battle scars. Spindly fingers appeared on either side of the doorframe, crushing it to splinters to widen its exit. Its broad shoulders scraped past the opening and revealed the rest of the creature. Bathed in an eerie yellow light, Attila gazed upon a terrifying monstrosity. Even hunched over, the creature was taller than he was. Its body was thin and black, with a cloak of thick, matted brown fur. The monster's large, white eyes swiveled furiously in its head before the tiny pinprick pupils focused on him. Long, tangled black hair was gnarled in the thorns and branches on the beast's back and shoulders. A plume of dusty air issued from the visible nostrils in the creature's beak before it pulled its head back, opened its mouth, and let out a terrifying, shrill shriek. Attila tried to let out a manly yell in hopes to scare off the monster, except what came out of his mouth was an incoherent squeak of panic. He tried to run, but his legs wouldn't move. Come on, you stupid legs! He reached down and pulled one up, and then the other, until he felt like they could finally move on their own. Ready to put some more distance between the two of them, he turned around and lunged. Nope. His legs were still resistant to moving, and he collided, face first, into something hard. And then, it all went black. Brig! There was that flash of memory again, but more pieces began to slide into place. They had headed out to their favorite watering hole, a beacon of sophistication, hospitality, and intoxicated knife throwing. Something had followed them, waited patiently for them to leave, and stalked them on their way home. Brig had imbibed a few too many drinks that night, despite his assurances that he was fine, and was relying on Attila to support him. The problem was that Attila had consumed a few too many drinks as well, and was relying on Brig for similar stability. The pair of them were a stumbling mess of drunken laughter and horrible off-key singing. Something dissolved out of the dark and reached for Brig. Try as they might, they couldn't break its iron grip on him. It had its long, spindly black fingers wrapped around his arms, his neck, his legs, Attila could remember asking Brig how many hands a normal ooze monster had, because he was fairly certain this one had too many. Immobilized, Attila sat helpless as his friend was dragged off by a monster with too many appendages, too many mouths, and thousands of eyes. A creature that looked as if it were made from a jumble of other animals. 
a form made by something that had no idea of how it should look. Brig gave one last look at Attila with a face of drunken horror, and Attila snapped awake. He felt a strangled cry fall from his mouth as he sat bolt upright. His head reeled in pain in response to his action. An agonizing throb ached against his left temple, and he winced. He felt the familiar cold porcelain of the operating table beneath him. Attila reached up a hand and felt a large knot on his head, tender to the touch. Hey, easy. Don't try to move around so much. Attila turned around, trying to find the source of the voice. He had just got his eyes adjusted to his surroundings again when a pair of fingers pried his good eye wide open and a blinding point of light filled his head. <coughs> well, you're responsive this time, so that's good. But I think you might have a concussion. What do you want from me? Attila asked, his voice on edge as he swatted at the hand holding the flashlight to his eye. It fell to the ground with a clatter and the sound of a breaking light bulb. What do I want? Well, I suppose it's not too much to ask for a new flashlight, the voice said waspishly. Attila blinked away the last remnants of blinding colors from his eye, and the room settled back into focus. It was the same room he was in before, the same jars on the same shelves, and the same leaky sink near the same paper-laden desk. He had even been returned to the cold, hard surface he had laid on before. The only difference this time was the man standing a few feet from him, scribbling something down on a clipboard, his blue eyes reading lines behind a pair of cracked spectacles. Attila began to ask where he was, but suddenly realization set in. The table he was on, the skulls, the textbooks, the jars. This is a morgue, Attila blurted out. The man looked taken aback. What? No. It's a doctor's office. It is, and that makes you, you. Attila remembered the thing from the closet. A vampire! He squealed in horror as he scrambled from the table. He was still a little lightheaded and fell to the floor with a thud. He tried to scurry to his feet as quickly as he could, gave up, and hauled ass on all fours. There was no way Attila was going to let himself get stuck here as a meal for some cannibal crazed hermit. He reached a different door before Count Clipboard could even register what was happening. He hauled himself to his feet with the doorknob, flung the door open with a flourish, and jumped out into open air. He didn't even care that his hat was missing. A real merc didn't need a hat. He'd make Brig replace it anyway once he found him. After putting some space between himself and the morgue, Attila came to a stop. He regretted leaving his boot behind the moment he stepped out the door. The outer reaches of the ashland were spread out before him, a wasteland of desert. He could see the heat waves rippling the horizon in almost every direction. No cities, no towns, no women. Attila turned back the way he had come and felt his jaw fall slightly. Downwind from the morgueways was a giant forest. Not a forest of trees, though. This one had towering mushrooms and bright red ground cover. Perhaps he'd be safe from the Dr. Monster Vampire guy in there. As Attila drew closer, he felt the pull of apprehension. Perhaps the forest was not the best place to hide. Like dust falling in a sunbeam, there were many twinkling tiny orbs of light drifting down from each mushroom. The ground cover was actually a spongy red moss that released puffs of air with each step he made. Even though he was feeling lightheaded, he pressed on. It wasn't until he felt the ground tilt away from his feet that he stopped. Going deeper into the woods was not a great idea. Suddenly, as if a pair of hands had seized him around his neck, Attila felt his windpipe close up. He began hacking and coughing as he collapsed to his knees. The more he struggled to breathe, the harder it became. Red flooded his vision as he became paralyzed, face down in the moss. He could feel the darkness threatening to take him again. This was it. This was how he was going to die. And all Attila could think about 
was how angry he was that he wasn't dying in the arms of a beautiful, busty babe, or three. All right, let's try this again. There was that voice again, that familiar voice, accompanied by a very familiar, stiff surface. Attila would like to think that he reacted quickly, that he jumped to his feet, prepared to fight. But in truth, all he managed to do was fall off the table and land on the hard ground. A pair of hands gripped him tight and pulled him back up onto the table. Don't eat me! Attila cried out, his voice muffled by his own hand that was busy trying to stem the flow of blood from his now broken nose. The man handed Attila an old rag. I'm not going to eat you, he said, extending a hand in what he hoped was a friendly gesture. The name's Eric. Oh, good. Attila shook his hand, more to check for a pulse than anything. After pumping Eric's hand up and down for a good thirty seconds, he was fairly certain Eric was not of the undead. So, uh, what happened? Attila pressed the cloth against his tender nose, looking around again. Eric chuckled a little. <laughs> Which time? Oh, uh, sorry. Eric waved him off and turned to pick up a small table lamp. He grabbed Attila's face again, shining the light into his eye before he could protest. The first time you woke up here, I had found you unconscious and dehydrated out in the desert. You looked like you were following tracks or something. Oh, right. Brig. Something took my friend, Attila blurted out, trying to blink away the spots of light from his eye. Eric nodded his mouth forming a line as he thought of a response. Well, that's never good. You did look like you were headed towards the forest, which is where I found you the second time. Eric shoved a wooden tongue depressor into Attila's mouth and looked at the back of his throat. What? Attila began. He didn't know what to say or how to process everything. Satisfied, Eric tossed the depressor onto the table. The mushrooms were just starting to spore, so I think you'll be all right. Wouldn't want you turning into a mushroom in my office, Eric chuckled. I'm so confused. Aside from being highly hallucinogenic, the mushroom spores are parasitic. If exposed to too many spores for too long, you'll become a host. What, like zombies? Attila cried out, panic setting in. He didn't want to become a zombie. There were so many other things he needed to do before he died. All those people out there who didn't know his name or his deeds. All those women. Eric stopped and stared at Attila curiously. He chuckled again. Pfft, nah, that's absurd. No, they don't control your mind or your movements or anything like that. Once afflicted with the spores, assuming you survive passing out, they begin to set to work on turning your body into nutrients. You won't even notice. You'll go about your daily life until suddenly you can't move. And then boom, you're just another pizza topping. Eric patted Attila's shoulder. But don't worry. I'm about 80% eh, certain you're okay. Hallucinogenic, Attila repeated, as if that was the only thing he had heard. He turned his head to the door that the creature crawled from. Oh, yeah. Eric let out a bark of a laugh. That was certainly entertaining. I don't know if it was the dehydration or if you had chowed down on a mushroom, but you were not of sound mind when you woke up the first time. You sat up, glared at a bedpan like it insulted your mother, tossed it aside, and grabbed one of your boots. You blurted out some nonsense words and played with your shoe for, I don't know, a good 15 minutes before you pulled it on. Eric was finding it hard to continue the story with a straight face, but he muscled through it. You then tried to put on your other shoe, freaked out, and threw it over there somewhere. Eric pointed behind him with a jab of his thumb. Then you started banging the bedpan on the table, walked in circles a few times, put said bedpan on your head, and opened my supply closet there. Eric pointed over to the wall. You freaked out again, started tugging on your legs, fell over, and hit your head on the table. Attila felt his cheeks flush with heat and averted his gaze. How embarrassing. 
Here's hoping this won't be the tale I'm remembered by, Attila thought. At least Eric wasn't a pretty lady. Okay, so how do I get my friend back? He asked. You said a thing took him, correct? Yeah, it was a, a blob of arms and teeth and eyes. Blech, Attila replied with a shudder. Hmm, sounds like a creature from the other world. Eric turned to look at the wall that faced the forest. I've never heard of a corporeal that far from the anomaly, though. It's really rare to find a visible entity of even minute size, let alone one large enough to abduct somebody. Okay, are you done making up random words? Can you help me get my friend back or not? Well, that's the problem. The creatures from the other world, or the unseen, are invisible in this realm, and there are very few people who can see them. And judging by the direction you were headed, your friend was probably dragged into the forest. There's a gateway to the other world at the very heart of it. Attila didn't say anything. He just sat there, staring blankly at the doctor. Nothing was making any sense. Eric sighed. As a doctor, he should be used to having to over-explain something by now. Well, the forest spawned from the gateway, which means the creature was probably headed that direction. So all we need is someone to help us get there. Then we'll be able to get your friend back. He moved to his desk, where he pulled a map from beneath a stack of books. Lucky for you, I happen to know someone who could help. I'll gather some supplies, and we can leave in a few days. Wait, days? That thing might be chowing down on Brig as we speak. And who said anything about we? There are three types of unseen. What you described takes time to, um, absorb its prey. Your friend has time. And as far as we, do you know anything about this area? Eric asked, looking up from the map. Uh, no. All right, then. I'm going. I've been eager to return to the gate for more data anyway, and hopefully my brother feels up to helping. It's been so long since we've seen one another. Hmm. Eric's voice drifted off as he started mumbling to himself, scurrying around the shop, tossing things into an old doctor's bag. Attila sat there, trying to wrap his head around everything, but none of it had stuck. He was too concerned for Brig to retain anything. He gave a sigh as he looked down at the bedpan and made a mental note to take a shower the first chance he got. Of Monsters and Mushrooms is an ongoing serialized novel by Leslie Heron. Originally, she was creating it as a four-chapter short story, but then, as the project ballooned into a full-length novel, the first chapter became less and less accurate to the plot. This production has been the rewrite of Chapter 1, produced to celebrate the 50th episode of Tall Tale TV. If you'd like to listen to the original, there will be a link in the notes. Hi, I'm Attila, and I'd like to- Whoa, whoa, whoa. You got to do the last one. It's my turn. What? I mean, technically, this is chapter one. So, how could I have done the last one? Oh, come on. There's already ten chapters published, and you know it. You got to do that fun brochure thingy for chapter 10, so that means it's my turn. No, no, technically, it would be Evan's turn. And since he's not here yet, I know he would want me to do it, because I'm his favorite. He can't stand you! Ah! Just give it here. You just want it because it's episode 50. So what if I do? Give it. No! Come here. Hey! Oh. Oh. Did you me? Fine. How, how about we share it? I suppose that could work. On three? Sure. One, two... I'm Attila Rex and that's it for Tall Tale TV. Hey! <laughs>